on the forward cabin. We've got some water damage. This is all wet. I thought my new port light had a bad seal, but then I discovered it wasn't tightened down. It was just kind of loose. That's the windscreen canvas flapping around up there. So yeah, I think it just came through the, the door the windows, the port seal. All right, I'm gonna try to dry this out. Tighten it down. Yeah, the battery's disconnected. Terminal block removed, some of the other wiring cleared out of the way. And have my new panel tacked in place. Just two screws right now into the stud right here. Once I get everything aligned proper, I've got some L brackets. I'm gonna install on the back side right here to sink into one of the studs that's on the back side of the installation. Next, I need to figure out how to install the switch and terminal block utilizing the existing wire runs. Made some changes to my schematic based on comments on my last video. Thank you for all the advice and guidance. Pointed out a few things that uh, I certainly missed. I am uh, I'm grateful for the feedback. Uh, first thing is, the starting on the left-hand side, the supply line from the house battery bank. I will run that through a shunt. However, I've since learned that shunt actually runs on the, the negative wire, the black wire, not the red, but I'm leaving it on this diagram just to remind me that uh, I am going to do that at a future date. I'm going to order one of those uh, Victron battery computers. The uh, alternator will now come directly off the engine to this bus to feed the house bank. The fuse block, which has items that should be before the main disconnect switch for the house bank, primarily bilge pumps, and then the ACR in line to combine the house and engine banks when the engine's running. Well, I've since learned it's not standard practice to have the ACR on the switch side of the engine battery switch, but I am going to leave it switched. My thinking is, and maybe temporary, this is an easy um, reroute later if it doesn't work out, but my thinking is that uh, when I'm back at the dock and the boat is not in use, we'll be on AC charge, and uh, I want to have the ACR disconnected anyway so the banks aren't combined. The breaker panel has a selector switch, and that's where the AC battery charger is wired directly to each battery bank. So I'm going to leave that switch in place, and the engine start bank will be connected to the AC charger even when the main disconnect switch is set to off. Two new voltmeters arrived. These are to replace the amp meters that are now uh, uh, obsolete. So I'm gonna pull the dash and attempt to install. All right, so I want to determine which of these wires goes where, coming off the alternator. One of them originates at the alternator, the other loops off of uh, either the panel below or the amp meter above. Fortunately, one's black, one's yellow. So I'm gonna disconnect those and do some tracing. Wood's warm, it's drying out. It's going to be stained though. Ah, it's frustrating. Just a few days of rain with loose port lights and the wind was blowing this way for the majority of the storm. Grr. I have the lower helm volt gauge installed. Battery charge is running right now, so we got 14.9 volts going into the system. I've been on batteries all day, so uh, they're taking a little bit of a charge just from all the work lights I had on today. This is power or ground for the fuel gauge. The fuel gauge is broken, so I don't know. It's just short and it always comes unplugged. Um, this yellow wire and black wire were connected to the original amp meter. Black, yellow, 
and then the black also on the same post as the black wire it was the red ignition switch and gauge cluster positive lead so why they use the black cable to send positive um, I mean I kind of get it after all the tracing this appears to be the chain of events the yellow wire lead on the engine wire harness that connects to the alternator comes up to the electrical panel um, locker and this was uh, tied directly to another yellow wire, the one that goes up to the helm. But I think originally this yellow wire was on an alternator lug on this battery selector switch. Which I think was this charge position. So instead it was directly connected to a wire which I've removed but it found its way to this terminal. I've traced this wire and labeled it lower helm amp meter. So that is the yellow wire we were just looking at, which is this yellow wire. The black wire goes up to the flybridge amp meter. And you can see from the picture here, the other side of the flybridge amp meter is a red lead. And through beeping some things out and tracing harnesses. I can't fo follow the wire for the entire run, but I'm 99% confident it's in this bundle, this white bundle, and it travels from the fly bridge down to this first position. I need to label this, this guy. So this is the uh, outbound side of the fly bridge amp meter. And then that continues over to the output side of the battery selector switch. So what's going on here is if, uh, like right now I'm on battery bank two, the house bank selected. So it's sending out to here, which sends this red lead up to all my circuit breakers. If there's current um, coming from the alternator, yellow wire, you'd have positive amps going into the system. And when the engine's off and you're running off the batteries, you would have a uh, negative because it'd be flowing off the red side of the circuit. So I get that alternator side is a yellow lead. The battery bank is the red lead. What I don't understand is why in the middle between the two amp meters, why do they choose to use a black wire? Because this terrifies me. Now that I've bypassed the amp meter, I have a voltmeter in place and I'm powering the voltmeter off of the um, gauge ignition switch. So the gauges aren't on unless the ignition's on. Um, but Originally, the ignition battery side was powered off the black side, the black cable side of this amp meter. Are you confused? Because I'm confusing myself just trying to explain this. However, I feel pretty good about all of it. Now, my new issue. When I turn the key on, the battery charger faults out and says high, high voltage but I'm only metering 12 volts and nothing's getting warm. So I don't know why it's doing that. All right, I get the, the new switch installed. Things are just finger tight at the moment. The lead is still con disconnected from the battery bank. Same, uh, I get my alternator leads disconnected. Right now I'm just sending power to the house and the bilge pumps. And I'm waiting for some parts that are back ordered. I'm waiting on a two terminal blocks. And then I'll, uh, I think I ordered some lugs too, just to crimp a bunch of uh, new wiring to go between all these components that I will install on this. Well, that's it for now. I'm going to be traveling for a few weeks on business. So uh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get a video out. I will try. I've got a little bit of backlog of uh, material in my phone here. So uh, I definitely have some downtime sitting in the hotel rooms. So I don't know. We'll see. That's it for now. Thanks for watching. You want me to come back to you guys? Back, yes. back, back. There. Yeah. Boom. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Cover it. Best case scenario.